ladies and gentlemen, can we have a massive welcome for the only Frank Finesse. Yeah. <laughs> was anybody ever average at school? Anyone average at school? I was always average at school. I always wanted to be in the first rugby team. I was at every rugby practice, but I was always in the second team. I always studied hard, but I always got C's and D's. I was always average, except in one thing, with women. <laughs> there I was way below average. <laughs> I mean, you know how bad it is? I looked like a nerd, but I didn't have the, the brains to go with it. You know how bad that is? Terrible. Anyway, I come from South Africa. I grew up in a little mining town. My dad was a miner. Every day I'd go two, da two miles down the mine, come back up again. And if we didn't have a disaster, I'd be putting on my overalls and my boots, getting ready to go and do my shift right now. But we lived on an area that was built on dolomite. And every time it rained, everything used to sink. And I remember my dad going in the mornings and checking a little meter on the side of the house. And if our house had sunk too much, they'd just move us to another house. About two days after my ninth birthday, about four o'clock in the morning, pandemonium, sirens going off, all kinds of things. You've got to get out of the village. The whole village is falling in. And this is one of the sinkholes that appeared over there. One family disappeared into it, never to be seen again. The village was sealed off right up until today. It's a ghost village. It's got all of our clothes, got everything there. Moved away, moved in with my grandmother. And we grew up pretty poor. I don't know if anyone else had the experience as well where you buy your school uniforms from the second-hand shop, and the sleeves are up here somewhere, you know. And we didn't really care about that. We had a, a happy family. And we were a blue-collar family. My mom decided I was going to be the first person to have a degree in the family. No one ever had a degree. I was going to become an accountant. <laughs> now, I don't know if we have any accountants in the room. <laughs> it's a different breed of person, Mike. <laughs> but anyway, I lasted about 10 months before I got fired. And uh, that was the end of my degree. And then I did what I always wanted to do. I became a drummer in a rock band. And we were like the take that of our day. It was fantastic. Didn't make much money, but the fringe benefits, unbelievable. LAUGHTER <laughs> Now, the reason I'm telling you that is when I came into speaking 17 years ago, I looked back at my rock career, and I said, we used to go and do tours all over the place. Every night we'd be in different places. Why not do that in speaking? And I think I'm one of the few speakers that does that. I do speaker tours all over the world. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. But uh, as Michael warned me over there, please do not product sell. I don't know where I've got this terrible reputation about selling products because... Oh, oh, by the way, that, that was what I looked like. Isn't that cool? Oh. Jeez, I tell you what. That was great, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to product sell today. I'm not going to be telling you about my speaker's boot camp that's on the 14th and 15th of March. Or about my internet marketing masterclass and uh, video. So please don't ask me about that. Michael, you said you'd do bad things. So I'm not going to mention that at all. But I'm going to get on with it now. I'm going to talk about how do we make money out of this business. What I'm doing here, it's not a keynote, it's not a speech, it's, it's nothing else except a data dump. That's why I've got all of this stuff over here. This is a one-off talk. This is my visual reminders of what I've got to talk about. I've got notes, things I would never have with me, but because it's a one-off talk, I don't want to forget anything that could be important to you. So let's get right into it. By the way, if you want a copy of today's presentation, plus I've got one product called How to Find New Business, uh, sells for £65. Either just give me your business card. If you don't have a business card, you can fill uh, your name and your email address over here, and you'll get a copy, a downloadable copy, £65 product over there, and uh, I'll send you the whole presentation as well. And it also gives me permission to sell you things. <laughs> oh, you've got to do all these things, you know. Anyway, so here we get into it. For me, the whole business plan is all starts over here. You've got to be fantastic on the platform. You've got to be an expert on the platform. The second thing is you have got to have products. Uh, I love products. I'm always developing products. 
I'm going to tell you about a, uh, one that I'm developing in a little while that hopefully will make me a lot, a lot of money. You've got to have products. The third thing is you've got to understand internet marketing because our whole business has changed. For a lot of people now, they're going to type in sales and marketing speaker. They're going to type in, uh, type in leadership speaker. And as we heard earlier on, if you don't come up on the first page, you're dead. Uh, we've heard what Steve had said. You've got to get involved in all kinds of... I get out about... I've got 650 videos on YouTube. I do at least two, um, two new... Uh, what would we call it? Word documents that go out. But I, I can get onto the first page of Google uh, anytime just by writing a, a great, great article. And if you come on the boot camp, I'll teach you how. But no, no, no. I've got to stop that. But here's the other big thing. <laughs> You've got to get an exit strategy. I mean, this it is a pretty tough business, you know. There are times when things are absolutely fantastic, but there are also times when you wake up and you say, geez, that, the month is not looking too good. So you've got to have an exit strategy. About three years ago, a friend came to me and said, let's start up a financial services company. And I said, okay, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. You're going to run it full time. I'm going to help you set it up. Our website is going to be totally different to any other financial services company. We're going to do pay-per-click. We're going to have videos of Meet the Team. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. We generate 180 leads a month with about a 51% uh, conversion rate. So that's our exit strategy. Hopefully in five years' time, somebody's going to come and offer us uh, some money, and that's the exit strategy. Think about how you can get your exit strategy. Okay, so here we start. First thing is focus on a niche market. We heard it a little bit earlier on. What is your niche? How can you become a go-to person in a certain market? Now, I have a couple of niche markets. I used to sell financial services, and I decided when I got into this, I was going to become a specialist in offshore financial services and marketing. And uh, I got published in just about every one of their newspapers, all of their magazines. If you're going to get into a market, you've absolutely got to immerse yourself. You've got to know everything about that market. I get booked by people like HSBC that will book me for 16 countries and pay me to travel around the world to go and speak to their advisors. Uh, I know everything about that market. I know every insurance company. I know who the movers and shakers are. I know everything about that market. I am the go-to person in that market. Nobody else would have heard of me outside that market, but in that market, I'm a big person. Uh, I'm big in hospitality. Hospitality is another huge market of mine. And there's an interesting one, a market that I've just broken into, I don't know, almost by mistake, about, uh, I'd say about a year ago. About two years ago, somebody asked me, they'd seen me, and they'd asked me to come and do a talk on how to use social media for the health and fitness business. It was in Birmingham, did the talk there, and somebody saw me, didn't get anything from them, and then in the middle of last year, they said, listen, we've got a big health and fitness conference in Amsterdam, 600 owners of health clubs. Can you come in and do a talk on how to use social media for the health and fitness business? Said, yeah, that would be great. The fee wasn't that fantastic because it's an association job. Now, association jobs, I will almost do for nothing because it is full of bookers. So anyway, I'm going to go there and the guy phones me uh, about a week before. He says, somebody's just cancelled. We've got an extra slot. What do you charge us? to do a slot on leadership. I said, well, two things. I don't speak on leadership. I've never led a big company. I can never go and talk about it. I said, but what I can do is I can tell stories about some of the great companies I've worked with and the leaders and what they do. He said, fantastic. What do you charge? I said, I'm there. I'm, uh, I'm not going to charge you anything. I'm going to be there already. The guy loved that, you know. And it is. I'm going to be there already. Anyway, I got up, did the leadership talk. There's about 300 people in the room. And it was a workshop. Now, here's the other thing as well. I love doing keynotes. Keynotes do not bring me all the extra work. The workshop brings me all the extra work. Whenever I'm doing a keynote, I always offer to do an extra workshop. Can you give me that? What is a keynote? Okay, great. Good question. Keynote, 45 minutes up on stage where they want edutainment, education and entertainment. <laughs> Normally three points that I'd have, and I'd have five slides built around that, all pictures, or videos. I make them laugh, I make them try, I cry, I take them on a journey. Now, people say, oh, that's fantastic, that's wonderful, um, but they're not going to book me. The workshop, I go in, I've got a two-hour workshop, there I hit the content. And believe me, 
That's where I get all of my bookings from. So I always go back and say, I want to do an extra workshop at your conference. Anyway, they booked me. I go in, did the two workshops over there. Immediately after that conference, I picked up five other jobs. Five other jobs. And I had two journalists that came to me and said, we've got magazines. Can you do an article for us for a magazine? Straight away into those magazines. They've just been published now. One of the jobs I've got next month, I'm going to Poland. I've got one in Germany. Uh, I've got one in uh, uh, North Carolina later this year. Uh, and I've got, there's, another, there's about five of these that I've got. They just, un oh, and I did one in London two weeks ago. And I met the go-to person in that health and fitness industry. If you're going to get into an industry, you've got to know that industry backwards. The guy that runs the industry association for the whole of Europe, his name is Hans. Anyway, he phones me up a couple of weeks ago and he says, let's have some breakfast. He's flying in from Zurich. So I go and I have breakfast with him. And he starts asking me some questions. And he says to me, you really don't know anything about our industry, do you? I said, no, I don't. You know, I came and I did a talk, but I don't. He says, if you're going to be in our industry, you've got to know exactly how it all works. And he gave me two hours of the most valuable time I've ever had telling me about the movers and the shakers, where I've got to go, what I've got to do, what all of the pain points are, all of the introductions. He's just introduced me to the guy in Australia, so I'm meeting up with him in June. If you're going to do an industry, know it backwards so you can become the go-to person in that industry. So that's the first point over there. Focus on a niche market. Don't try to be everything to everyone. So that's my biggest, biggest focus at the moment is how do I become the go-to person? By the way, it's also different. Every speaker I've met at that industry, oh, the other two I did was Dubai and Kuwait in December. All of those speakers I have never heard of. I've been speaking 17 years. I've never heard of those. They are industry speakers. I'm on the conferences with them. I'm eating. I'm drinking with them. All of a sudden, what do they do? They start referring me into all of their other clients again. I'm trying to get some of them to join the PSA over here because they are phenomenal speakers we've never heard of, but they're absolute gods in the health and fitness industry. It's a huge, huge industry. The second thing is speak on topics that will get you booked. This is such a big one over there. I mean, everyone has this big passion. Oh, I'm a fly fisher. That Who's going to book you on fly fishing? You've got to find out what's going to get you booked. So social media is a big one. I started out in sales. I've always spoken on sales. And then I realized sales has almost moved into social media. This is a new kind of buyer. They start qualifying us. They check out our websites, our YouTube channels. So I started speaking on social media. Then I heard the buzzword was engagement. So people were looking for speakers on social engagement. Again, we heard Chris saying over there, when people type in certain things in keywords, do you come up? Engagement is a buzz one. Then again, I speak on global business. Now, everything is the same. It's almost the same message. It's just how I market that message. So I talk about, I go to all of these countries, and this is how it's changing. This is how you've got to use social media. Same kind of uh, message, sales and marketing. And here's the big one at the moment is managing disruptive change. For me, that just means social media. You know, things are changing. You've got to treat people in a different way. You've got to use social media. So use the words that people are going to be looking for. Speak on things that people will book you for. There's a big one. Be relevant and credible. Be relevant and credible. Now, I did this talk on leadership. And all I do is I talk about three case studies of three great leaders. And the people I speak about are relevant to the industry. I worked with a guy called Joe Cerulli at Gainesville Health and Fitness. He saw me speaking, brought me into his club. Uh, most Probably the most successful health and fitness club in the world. In a tiny little... Who's heard of Gainesville? Anyone heard of Gainesville? It's like a little hit town. 270,000 people. His gym has got 27,000 members. Joe is the god in that industry. I went in there. I worked with them. He showed me the 85-page manual that everybody gets when they come in. He shows me the, the back to basics. Anybody that joins him starts as a fitness trainer. The way he so what do I do now? I speak about Joe as a business leader. And I've got two or three other great business leaders. So that's where I can speak about not leadership, but what I've learned from business leaders. Chris, I think you said it earlier. When we all start out, somebody says, what do you speak on? I can speak on anything, which means you can't speak on anything because you've got to be a specialist. And the more niche you are, the better it's going to be. I don't use other people's stories. We've heard that earlier on as well. Tell your own stories. And I love having great stories. Uh, 
when I was listening to you, Steve, it was uh, reminding me of remembering people's names. Uh, is anyone here not good at remembering names? Okay, so I don't feel alone there. One of my favorite personal stories, just when I started out in financial services, I made an appointment with one of the top guys at IBM. His name was Eustace Harris. And I'm sitting at reception and I thought to myself, please don't call him useless Harris. <laughs> <laughs> and the brain is a funny thing, isn't it? <laughs> I walked in there, hi useless, how are you doing? <laughs> And then I had a brain drain. I kept calling him useless all the time. I burst out <laughs> laughing. Well, didn't get that sale. <laughs> we learn from our failures as much as the successes. <laughs> There's another one. Build key relationships. And I've got a few things over here. Now, key relationships, we've heard about that all the time. I build very, very deep relationships. Uh, let's take a look at some of those over here insurance companies. That's the area I work in. All of the offshore insurance companies, I know everybody in that company. I send them birthday wishes. I do all kinds of things with those people. When I go out, if I'm going to Dubai, I'll phone all of those people. We'll go out. We'll have drinks together. I've got incredible relationships with the insurance companies. Uh, here's an interesting one. The guy that booked me in London after the association meeting asked me to come in and do some training for uh, his company. Now here's the one thing as well, I don't do training. If you say you do training, they put you into a box and they give you a certain fee. I run master classes. My master class is the same as my keynote fee. Same talk, just a whole different way of doing it. So I went in, did a master class, it was great. And then I learned that David is the go-to person in the health and fitness industry. He has got a database of 50,000 clubs just here in the UK. He writes for a Japanese magazine. There are 200,000, not clubs, but health club groups, like David Lloyd would be one group. So him and I got really, really close. He's told me a couple of things that I've got to do, and uh, I'm busy working on the product with him.